Good morning. Welcome to worship with Seminole Heights United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Tiffania. I'm so glad you're joining us in person and online for worship this morning. Uh, before we get started with worship, I am going to invite Candice Legg, the chair of our Staff Parish Relations Committee, um, to share a little update with us this morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, so exciting updates. I don't often get to share exciting updates. Um, first, I want to wish Pastor happy birthday today. And amazing pianist, musical director, Judy, happy birthday tomorrow. And in the spirit of appreciation, we remind you we have two more weeks in Pastor Appreciation Month. We're collecting well wishes and any kind of gifts you want to bestow on our pastor as part of this appreciation as we're gearing up towards a very busy season for her and the whole church. So we're collecting in the back um, with a card or in the basket or just send her a note. Kids make crafts. So just trying to ask, show some love, and we'll be giving her all those gifts um, in a couple weeks. That's it. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Candice. We are going to continue in worship with our call to worship. Oh God, you are our God. We seek you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Your steadfast love is better than life. Our lips will praise you we will lift up our hands and call on your name. For you have been our help. In the shadow of your wings, we sing for joy. We cling to you. Your right hand upholds us. Amen. Now we are going to have our choir sing for us this morning. And uh, choir is starting to meet every other week. Uh, and on the off weeks, the handbells are meeting. So if you're interested in being a part of our choir or handbells, um, you can come. Uh, they'll be in the music room, which is kind of right behind the sanctuary. Uh, or you can reach out to Judy Colvin, our worship director, and she will get you connected. So now let us join uh, in joy worship with our choir this morning. Yeah. 
channel of your peace. It is in that we are part of. going to move into a time of prayer and I just want to remind you uh, the best way to let us know how we can be in prayer together is through the prayer request cards. Uh, we have physical cards in the back of the sanctuary. Uh, we also have a link to complete a card online. If you're worshiping with us online, uh, you can let us know how we can pray with you and for you. Um, just a few prayer requests that I wanted to share with you all. Um, we want to keep Jane Brady in our prayers. Uh, she went to the hospital yesterday. She's been having some issues with her um, medications, and she had a fall, but she's back home today. Um, she's feeling much better, um, still kind of, you know, recovering from that. But uh, just keep Jane and her family in your prayers uh, as she continues to recover. I also want to let you know that... Um, Betty Sue and Ronnie Mason uh, were members of our church for quite a long time, and their son, Ronnie Mason II, passed away last Saturday, the October 9th, um, and he, his funeral service will be on October 24th, um, so next Sunday, at Hopewell Funeral Home in Plant City. Uh, they'll have visitation at 2 o'clock and the service at 3 o'clock, so um, they, the Masons have been um, Longtime members here, um, we still care for them very much, and so uh, you're invited to um, send them condolences, uh, let them know that you're thinking of them, and if you feel to, led to go to the service, I'm sure they would appreciate uh, seeing friends there. Uh, and I now want to invite you to join with me in prayer. Loving God, we come to you today to praise your name and worship you. We confess that some days we're tired, we're weary, we're downcast, and we let worries and confusion reign in our hearts. Forgive us. Renew our spirits so we can sing your praises once again. God, we're thankful today for the ways we can gather as your people in worship, with family and friends, thank you for all the love in our lives. This morning, I especially want to thank you for another year of my life and another season as a pastor of this loving congregation. Merciful Father, we ask you today to bring healing to the hearts and bodies of all those who are hurting today. Comfort all who are grieving. Bring rest to the weary. Bring hope to the hopeless. Help us to be your hands and feet as we share your love in the world through our words and actions. And now we pray together the words Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now I'm gonna invite the kids to come forward for the children's message. <laughs> let's come let's come a little more into the middle guys all right 
So we just had prayer time together, right? And we prayed together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Now, did you know that this is not a prayer that I made up or that someone made up, but the Lord's Prayer is actually in the Bible? We call it the Lord's Prayer because Jesus, our Lord, taught us to say this prayer. So today in church, we're going to talk a little bit more about the Lord's Prayer and how we can remember to pray just like Jesus taught us. Now, there's a lot of different ways to pray, right? Do you know what's one way that you can pray or one time that you can pray? You can keep your hands folded, right? That's really good so that you focus, right? We sometimes close our eyes so that it helps us to concentrate a little bit on what we're saying. We can pray out loud, right? Can we also pray silently? Yeah, right? There's so many different ways to pray. I'm going to teach you guys one way to pray today, all right? And it actually is using our hands to help us remember a way to pray for others before we pray for ourselves. Because sometimes we want to just pray for ourselves, right? We want to pray for help or for, you know, doing well on a test or on a project or in a competition. But it's important to pray for others in our lives as well. So I want you guys to hold up your hands, all right? This is called the five-finger prayer. So when we pray, we usually put our hands together, right? Well, this prayer helps us to use our five fingers to remember how we can pray for, for other people in our lives. So we start off with the thumb, the finger that's closest to us. And our thumb reminds us to pray for those who are closest to us, because that's our finger closest to us, right? So when we first start praying, we pray for our families, for our good friends, for all the people that we love the most in our lives. So that's the first group is with our thumb. Then we have our pointer finger, right? The pointer finger. Now the pointer finger, here we go. The pointer finger points us where we should go, right? So with our pointer finger, we pray for the people in our lives who point us in the right direction. So that's like our teachers, like maybe our doctors, people who, coaches, any grown-ups or other people in our lives who might teach us something or help us to grow and learn. So that's our pointer finger. Then we have our middle finger. And you guys can kind of see the middle finger is the tallest finger, right? So our middle finger, we pray, we remember to pray for our leaders. So that can be leaders in our church or leaders in our community, you know, the principal of our school, our mayor, all those people, our, our government leaders, anyone who's a leader. So we want to pray for those people as well because they have to make a lot of hard decisions sometimes. Next, we have the ring finger. And you guys can see I have some rings on my ring finger, right? Now, did you know this finger is actually the weakest finger? This finger? So when we pray, when we think of our ring finger, we want to pray for those who need extra help. You maybe pray for someone who's sick, someone who's going through a hard time, someone who we know who might need some extra help. We'll pray for them when we go to our ring finger. And then last, we have the pinky finger, which is the smallest finger. And then when we get to our pinky finger is when we pray for ourselves because we need to be thinking of others first, and then we can ask God for things that we might need help with or if we're feeling sad or if we're going through a hard time. So the five-finger prayer is just one way to remember how to pray, how to pray for others. There's so many ways to pray. Like I said, the Lord's Prayer is one way that Jesus taught us. But I wanted to help you guys remember another way. So I have um, some sheets for you with the five-finger prayer. And we're actually going to pray a five-finger prayer together. So you guys can keep those so you don't forget. So I need you guys to put your hands together for me. And we're going to follow along with our five-finger prayer, okay? So I'm going to have you repeat after me as we pray. So let's pray. Dear God, I pray for my family and friends. I pray for my teachers, my doctors, and my coaches. I pray for all the local leaders 
for my pastor and for our government leaders. And God, I pray for those who are sick and hurting. And finally, I pray for myself, for you to guide me as I grow and learn. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining me in that five-finger prayer. So that's just one way that we can pray together. You guys can go to your class now. We're going to move into a time of offering. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to give back to God out of all that God has given to us. And it's a chance for you to be a part of the ministry that our church does here in our church, in our community, and in our world. You can see there's so many ways that we have been giving back lately um, as we're you know, getting back into the swing of things. So you're invited to be a part of some of that ministry. Um, we also are needing folks to help serve. So we, can, we know we can also give of our service and of our time. Um, serving in the pumpkin patch, serving with a couple of different special events this month. But you're invited to be a part of our ministry and um, make a gift today. Uh, you can give here in person. We have uh, offering plates in the back of the sanctuary. We also can take your gifts online. If you text the word SEM Heights to the number 30101, 40101, that's on the screen. Uh, you can get a link to make a gift there. You can also take a picture of that QR code and make a gift directly that way as well. But you're invited to be a part of our ministry this morning to help us make a difference and to transform lives and our world through our gifts. <laughs> Our scripture reading for today comes from Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, 
Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, our Bible verses for today might be familiar words to you. We pray words like this every Sunday in worship when we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Now, you might just think that this prayer is a nice ritual, but the Lord's Prayer actually comes from these verses and other verses that are very similar to this in the Bible. The Lord's Prayer has been prayed by Christians for thousands of years, starting with Jesus himself. So today we're talking about how we can grow in generosity. And that journey starts with being grounded in gratitude. That was our theme from last week, giving thanks to God for all that we have received. So we are continuing in this GPS, uh, this acronym to help us to remember how we can grow in generosity. And so this week, our theme is revealed through prayer. And next week, we'll discuss what it means to be sealed by faith. So as we talk about prayer this week, the Lord's Prayer is a good place to start. This is what Jesus told his disciples when they asked how they should pray. So what does the Lord's Prayer tell us about how we should pray? And how can prayer help us in our generosity journey? So first we're going to dig into the Lord's Prayer a little bit. Now the Lord's Prayer doesn't start with a laundry list of things that we want or need. It starts really simply. Father. Now, we don't need to start every prayer by addressing God as Father, but Jesus is using this way to address God to set the tone for the prayer. God loves us. God wants to hear from us through prayer. I remember when my mom or dad would pick me up from school they, I would get in the car and they would ask, how was school today? And I would go into a whole story and tell them everything that I had done that day. And as I got older, I realized that the question was not, you know, they didn't, they weren't concerned with only what I was learning or what I had accomplished, but they just wanted to hear from their child who they loved about what was going on in my life. They wanted to hear my own words. God loves us more than any parent ever could. Remember, we talked about we are made in the image of God. So when we pray, whether it's in the morning or in the evening or before meals or just whenever we remember in the middle of the day, our prayers are not an imposition on God. It's not something to rush through. It's a chance for each one of us to connect with our loving creator. God wants to hear from us through prayer. Now, as we move into the Lord's Prayer, Jesus starts with praise. This is an intentional choice to start the prayer with the words, hallowed be your name. Now, this word hallowed isn't a word that we use very often, but it means to be made holy, to be set apart. Jesus starts this prayer by praising God. Sometimes we just want to jump in to what we want to ask for from God, right? Ask for something for me. But it's important as we pray to pause and remember that we are praying to God, to the Holy One. And even though God is holy and mighty and awesome, God wants to hear from us. 
Now, as we get into a little bit more of the meat of the prayer, Jesus prays for some pretty big requests. He says, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. Now, these big requests, serve as requests to God, but they're also reminders to us. This first request, your kingdom come, reminds us that all we need or want of all those things, God's kingdom comes first. We are all called to work with God in the world. So your kingdom come is a request for God to work, but it's also a reminder for us to be part of that work through our words and actions. God is working in the world. When we ask God's kingdom to come, we're also committing to be part of God's work. The second request, give us our daily bread is literal and spiritual. God cares about our physical needs. When we have physical needs, it's okay to ask God for help. Now, we might also want to ask others for help, but God wants to know what we need, whether it's bread or friends or community or a new job. God works in big and small ways within the world and within our lives. Now, spiritually, bread is also the most basic form of food. So we're also asking God to meet our spiritual needs, to help us face each day, to give us the strength the power, the energy to face whatever is coming our way. Now we get to this next one. And in this one, Jesus really spells out what the reminder is. He doesn't just trust us to make that connection. Forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. Maybe this one's a little bit more aspirational. Of course, we need to ask God to forgive us for the things that we've done wrong. Confession is an important part of prayer. But if we're asking for forgiveness, we also need to forgive. Forgiveness is a two-way street. If we refuse to forgive others who have wronged us, our hearts won't be open to receive the forgiveness that God offers us. Finally, do not bring us to the time of trial. Now the language here might be unfamiliar, but the concept is simple. We're asking for God's protection in our lives, for God to protect us physically and spiritually. So the Lord's Prayer starts with remembering who we are, children of God, beloved by God. Then praises God for God's greatness and power. And then moves into petitions. After those reminders, we move into what we want, what we need. Asking for God to work in the world through us, asking God to provide for our daily needs, asking God to forgive us when we've done wrong and to help us forgive also. And finally, asking God to keep us safe from harm. Now, this is a great model for how to pray. We start with praise, ask for forgiveness, and then offer up our petitions or our requests. Now, Jesus told us to do it, right? So it's a great way to pray, but 
it's not the only way to pray. A 2017 study from the Barna Group found that 79% of Americans had prayed in the previous three months. And when asked what they prayed about, they gave many responses. People could choose more than one. You can see what many of those responses were here. Uh, these are many of the responses. I'll just talk about a few of them. I saw many prayed for gratitude and thanksgiving. We talked about that last week. The needs of family and community, personal guidance in crisis, my health and wellness. The list goes on. Things that you might expect to see folks pray about. Now, some of these requests that people made tie directly in to the Lord's Prayer. But notice, there's no mention of listening to God. No mention of asking, God, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to live? God wants to hear from us when we pray, but when we only pray as a way to ask God for help, we're missing out on the depth and richness of prayer. We can also pray as a way to listen to God, to open up our hearts, to make ourselves open to where God is leading. In the generosity challenge, they call this prayerful willingness. Prayerful willingness. Throughout the Bible, we can see examples of God's people who showed that they were prayerfully willing to serve God and lead God's people. Every time the prophets are called by God, they first say no. But after God reassures them, they change their answer to yes. Each of these prophets was listening for God's voice to hear that calling. When we pray only as a way to talk to God, we can't hear when God is leading us into something new. So today, to close my sermon time, I'm actually going to lead us through a prayer practice of listening to God. Now, if you're here in person, you got this little blue card. And this information will also be on the screen. Uh, so if you don't have your card, that's OK. Um, I wanted to give you this card to take home because this is a prayer practice that you can do on your own. You can use any Bible verses and use Lectio Divina. That's what this is called. It's called um, divine listening or divine reading to hear from God and see where God might be speaking into your life. So Lectio Divina is a way to listen to God, and I'm actually going to read from Exodus 3, when God called Moses to free God's people from slavery in Egypt. Uh, if You might be familiar with this as the burning bush story. So I'm going to read these verses a few times. And if you're with us in person, like I said, you have this little card. Uh, the words will be there on the screen if you're watching online as well. And you might need something to write with. If you don't have something to write with, that's okay. Um, but that'll help you in this exercise to write down your answers. So I'm going to guide us through this. You don't have to anticipate what's coming next. As I read these verses the first time, I'm going to invite you to listen. Just listen. You can read along if you like, but to try to focus on one word or phrase that really stands out to you. So we're going to listen to this entire passage, but see as you're hearing these words, as you're reading these words, what one word or phrase really stands out to you. So let's listen to God's word for us today. Moses came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. Then Moses said, 
I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then God said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their suffering." And I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians. And to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land. A land flowing with milk and honey. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I? that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt. God said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. Amen. So if you have your card, you can flip it to the other side. But I invite you to think about that word or phrase that was meaningful to you. Just take a few, we'll just take a few minutes to think about that word or phrase that was meaningful to you. All right, I'm going to read these verses again. And this time you're invited to still keep that word or phrase in mind, but to consider how that word speaks into your life. Why did this word connect with you? Why this particular word or phrase? So again, now we're thinking about why this word or phrase. So let's hear God's word again from Exodus chapter 3. Moses came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why this bush is not burned up. God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Then God said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings. And I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians. And to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land. A land flowing with milk and honey. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. 
But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God said, I will be with you. And this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. Amen. Now again, on your card or wherever you're writing, you're invited to write down why that initial word or phrase connects with you. Try to come up with just one sentence of why that word or phrase might connect with you. All right, we're going to hear this passage one final time. And during this reading, you're invited to ask what you need to do or how you need to respond to what God is saying to you through this word or phrase. What will you do differently as a result of God's word for you today? It could be something small, Give me something big, but you're invited to think now about what you will do as a result of what you're hearing from God this morning. Let us hear these words from Exodus 3. Moses came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Then God said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God said, I will be with you. And this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. Amen. Now again, you're invited to write down or think about 
what you will do differently. What is God calling you to do or consider or take on through this word or phrase? All right, friends, you just did Lectio Divina. Or you might have just listened to me read that passage three times. Either way, God was speaking. Were you listening? Now, Lectio Divina isn't for everyone. I understand. It's just, again, one way that we can pray, that we can hear from God, that we can use Scripture as a tool to help us to continue to hear God's voice in our lives. morning.
Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory God is always speaking to us, and I was listening to God during our Lectio Divina this morning. And friends, it has been a hard season for all of us. It's been a hard season to be a pastor, but it's been a hard season just to be human. Uh, we are still living in a global pandemic People are still dying. There is injustice in our world on all different levels. And today I hear God saying that God is with us. Through all of this hardship and difficulty, all the personal struggles that, that all of us have been facing during the season, God is with us. And God is leading us. And it's so easy to forget that, to think it's all about, it's all on us that we're just in it and just struggling on our own. But friends, God is with us. And God is here for all of us. Um, I do want to share with you some announcements because we have some really great things happening. We really do. We have amazing things happening in our community and in our church. 
I mentioned during my sermon, we have this workbook. I really highly recommend we have them for sale in the back of the sanctuary. It's really great. in the library in person. Um, they also meet online on Zoom. So if you feel more comfortable with that, uh, let us know. We can send you that information of how to connect and uh, how to go a little bit deeper. Uh, now, uh, Candace mentioned um, some SPR announcements. We have another SPR announcement that uh, Brad Kirksey uh, has started as our Family Ministries Director. He's in the back of the sanctuary today. Uh, <laughs> And Brad is going to be working with our children and youth and families um, and volunteers. Um, so we're actually going to have a chance for you to meet Brad and talk to Brad this afternoon um, from 5 to 6. Uh, he'll be in the pumpkin patch. We'll have some refreshments. Uh, all are welcome. You don't have to just be, you know, have a parent of a child or a youth because um, he's going to be working with all of us on in different ways. So uh, come by between 5 and 6. Come and meet Brad. Get some pumpkins. Uh, and we'll be able to, to get to know one another as he keeps working with us. Uh, in just a few weeks, we're hosting the Spooky Stroll. Uh, this is October 30th. Um, instead of our normal trunk or treat, that's kind of a not COVID friendly event that we've done in the past on Halloween, we're actually going to take part in the Spooky Stroll where families can sign up for a time um, so we can keep everyone socially distanced and we'll be outside. Uh, and during the Spooky Stroll, our church is going to be sponsoring a trunk or treat. So if trunk or treat is something you've done in the past and you love doing it, you're welcome. Uh, we need to just know who's going to be here. So please make sure you sign up. Uh, if you don't know what trunk or treat is, it's a chance to just decorate your car trunk and hand out candy to kids. So that will be what we do as part of that Spooky Stroll event in two weeks. Um, right now, I am the only trunk <laughs> signed up. So we need at least five to make it a fun activity for the kids that are coming to the event, but we can accommodate as many folks as want to be a part. And finally, uh, today is the last day to order a barbecue chicken dinner from the Kiwanis Club of Tampa. Um, I shared some of this, we shared some of this this week. Um, I'm part of the Kiwanis Club of Tampa. It's an organization that supports children in Tampa Bay. And our big fundraiser every year is selling barbecue chicken dinners. The dinners are $12 and include the half a chicken, bread, chips, and a cookie. Um, you might want to add a salad. Uh, but um, the dinners will actually be delivered here to the church this coming Thursday. They'll be available for you to pick up from the church. Um, but we need to know who wants a dinner, who's going to get one. So make sure you place an order by today. Um, you can just email me directly, tiffania at semheights.com, um, or write it. Uh, don't write on your welcome card because I need to know today. Um, you can send us a message through social media. You can um, try and catch me after worship if you are interested. Um, but as a reminder, that cost is $12 per meal, and they will be available for pickup on Thursday uh, from 4 to 6 o'clock 
downstairs. Um, if you order a meal, we'll give you the information of how to pick that up. But uh, we want to support the Kiwanis Club. They do some great work in our community, and they're partnering with Metropolitan Ministries this year. So the um, they're actually Metropolitan Ministries is actually cooking the dinners, and um, a lot of the dinners will be donated to Metropolitan Ministries as well. So. Um, that is a great cause, a great fundraiser, and we just need to know who is going to be part of it. So uh, let me know, reach out, and we will make sure that you get signed up. Now, as we go from this place, friends, remember that God is with us. God is always speaking to us and inviting us in to God's loving heart to do God's work in the world, but also to experience God's love in our lives. So you're invited today to keep listening, to hear what God has to say to you, and to follow where God is leading you this morning. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.